Hello and welcome to episode number 146, where I speak with two of my clients, Becky and Jenica, about their journey with Ayurveda. They share with us how they discovered Ayurveda, their personal Ayurvedic journey, and the impact it has had on their lives. So please stay tuned. Welcome to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. I'm your host, Colette, and I hope to educate and empower you to take charge of your health and well-being so that you can prevent dis-ease in the body and mind and thrive in life. I will be sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition from India. I will also discuss topics like yoga, which is the sister science of Ayurveda, health and wellness, nutrition, fitness, and mindfulness practices, as well as interviewing lots of inspiring people along the way. My humble wish is to help you to connect to your true nature, to mother nature, and to each other. If you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend that you start by listening to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. If you like the content, please be sure to subscribe to the show and the new episodes will automatically download for you to enjoy. I've also set up a Facebook group for us to connect and to support each other. And I'd love for you to join me over at the Elements of Ayurveda podcast group. And now here's the show. Hey there, I hope you guys are well and thanks for tuning in. Before I start in today's podcast, I want to say thank you for all the lovely messages and congratulations I received on reaching the three-year anniversary of this podcast. So here we are entering into year four and I continue to enjoy bringing you lots of educational content, great guests, and thanks again for listening. Thank you for sharing the podcast episodes. Thank you for your support. We want to get this wisdom of Ayurveda out into the world. And uh, thank you for being a part of sharing that wisdom. I truly appreciate it. Today's episode is an often requested episode where people want to hear clients' journeys. And I have two lovely ladies to introduce you to today who are clients of mine and who kindly agreed to come on and share their stories and their experience with their Ayurvedic journey. And so without further ado, let me introduce you to Becky. Hi, Becky. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How are you, Colette? I'm doing great. And I'm so thankful, Becky, to you. Oh, my pleasure. Yes. Great when, to be here. Oh, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I really think you're helping people as well when you share your story, because people are so interested in other, you know, people's journeys and their yes. healing journeys. So let's start with Becky. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, that would be wonderful. Sure. I am currently living in Indianapolis, but I originally grew up in Austin, Texas, and I was fortunate to spend a lot of my time growing up in nature. We camped a lot. We hiked a lot. In fact, as a child, I really wanted to be a park ranger so I could spend all my time outdoors, but um. you know how life changes. And so uh, as a, a teenager, I was introduced to a book series called Clan of the Cave Bear, by Jean M. Owl. And in the book series, the main character is a woman who is forced to survive on her own in the wilderness and learn how to find food and find uh, just ways to survive and keep her safe. And throughout the series, she meets other people and slowly she becomes a shaman or a medicine woman. At the end, she's learned how to use so many plants and things to treat herself and treat other people. And uh, that inspired me to to want to learn about nature and how it's provided us with exactly what we need to yeah. to live and to grow. Yeah. So uh, in college, I decided to become a pharmacist, thinking that I would be out doing that, finding nature and helping people get better. And pharmacy is very rewarding. I've been doing it more than 20 years now. Mm. It's not exactly finding plants and helping people with nature, but... Close enough. I do help a lot of people, which is a blessing. And so that is 
the majority of my short backstory. I love it. And I love that you had this calling from a young age. So when yes. did you discover this book? And can you repeat the title of it again? I forget the title. Of course. Uh, I don't exactly know when. My mom played it for us book on tape on a trip from Texas to California. I would say I was in um, late middle school, early high school. Okay. So right at a good formative age. Yes. And it's a series. I think there's six books in the series, but the uh, first book is called Clan of the Cave Bear. Oh. And the author is Jean Owl, and her last name is spelled A U E L. It's amazing how this book made such an impression yes. on you from a young age. Yes, huge impression. Very, very important in my life. So. I love that. And I love that this woman started out foraging. I've been talking a lot yes. about foraging lately. I just put up a social media post back in Ireland now. And my sister works with this professional forager. She's an occupational therapist. So she's helping children in nature. And it's amazing. So we That's all wonderful. went out foraging on the, on the coastline. And it was so much fun. Um, oh, I'm jealous. Yeah, it was it was brilliant. I learned so much. And it's so wonderful. Like in this book, you heard about this woman yes. foraging, and then that turned into a healing medicine woman, which has been exactly love. We it. should all get out and forage. That's wonderful, right? It's been coming really, really popular here in Ireland again. For the past few years, people are going out more and foraging. We used to always collect, you know, the mushrooms, but now people are yeah. really getting interested in much more of the sea life and the sea yes, herbs, the seaweed, yes, exactly, and the seaweed, and also just the healing plants as well. So I think right. that's amazing. It's such a great connection to nature. Yes, definitely. So, we have blackberries. I oh, love yes. the blackberries. Love yes. blackberries. Love them. Uh, so you had this connection or this calling with nature since a very young age. And so you went your path into pharmacy. And Correct. so when did you discover Ayurveda? So Ayurveda, uh, about two years ago, mm -hmm. I've, um, I've dealt with homeopathy and other things as a pharmacist, a lot of natural things. But Ayurveda front and center, about two years ago, a woman I respect deeply mentioned that no one in her family took pharmaceutical medications, which huge light bulb for me, because even though I'm a pharmacist, I definitely recommend less is better when it comes to pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. So um, I looked into why she said that. Turns out her husband is an Ayurvedic practitioner. Oh. And yes, so from there, I just dug right into Ayurveda and started looking for books and uh, figuring out what I could learn about this so that I could help myself and help other people to take less, less pharmaceutical medications. Great. And I love that, you know, thinking about bringing it into your work already when you were learning about it. So what has your journey looked like? So you started searching for more Ayurveda information and books and so on. So can you take us on a little path of how that journey has evolved for you? Because it has been a very exciting journey. I've loved watching yes, your, your it path. Has. <laughs> so at the time, uh, I was driving an hour back and forth from work. And so I looked for a podcast that I could learn about Ayurveda while I was driving. And uh, your logo caught my eye. It's oh. perfect combination of all the elements. I love it. And so um, I downloaded a few of yours. And just hearing your first hello, it brought my, I just was enthralled. So I started listening to yours every day. And listen to a few others, went back and forth, because it doesn't hurt to hear the same information over and over Absolutely. in different ways. Absolutely. And um, so I listened to yours, bought some books, started trying to incorporate the aspects of Ayurveda into my life, tried to do Dinacharya, tried to figure out my own constitution, you know, did all the quizzes. And finally, I was ready to uh, do a consultation. So I signed up for your Reset, Restore, Renew program. Uh -huh. And that was life-changing. Uh, the digestive reset was amazing. I've done another one since in the spring, and it really just helps your body to cleanse and start over. Mm -hmm. And you can't help take toxins in. So it's right. something that, um, and how slowly you walked me through it and the recipes that I still use every week mm -hmm. to this day <laughs> was amazing. And then the daily habits course uh, just, I'm still reading that stuff. It's so much knowledge and wisdom that, oh. that Ayurveda brings. Exactly. So I continued listening to your podcast, even uh, after my reset, 
Restore, Renew was over. And one day while I was cooking my kitchery, I listened to your podcast with Dr. J. Oh. And that night I was signed up for the Wellness Counselor Program oh, at Kerala no. Ayurveda Academy. I was oh. so excited. I was so too excited when you told me. <laughs> and Dr. J is amazing. Isn't he amazing? Simply amazing. Yeah. Yes. He's such a lovely man. So humble and yes. so wise. And just oh, so wise. The way so he sure. teaches. Yes. It's amazing. Infinite knowledge. Right? Really. Yeah. Um, and then, so I'm about halfway through the, the wellness counselor program, enjoying every moment. It's so much information and I so look forward to it. I've bought myself these plants. One reminds me of earth. One reminds me of uh, wind and one reminds me of oh, fire. Yeah. So it's my, um, my kapha vata pizza plants that I put at my work desk so oh. that while I'm working, if I'm stressed, I just look up and there's my Ayurveda reminder and ding, life is good. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, yes. Yeah. I love, I just love the journey you took because you started with this inspiration from a young age and yes. then you got the little hint from that friend you really respected and her husband being an Ayurvedic practitioner and that piqued your interest even more. And then you went on your own self-study. And can you tell us a little bit about that self-study? You went through the Reset, Restore, Renew program, which is the consultation, the in-depth consultation, the cleanse. Then you had another uh, check-in in in the middle of that program. Then you did the daily habits course, the 28 day, and then a final consultation at the end. And can you tell us any insights you had during that? Did you, you know, I found myself when I did my first cleanse, it was really like a, like I said, a self-study. You learn so much as you go through the process of cleansing. You learn so much about yes. yourself. Yes. You uh, learn that things from your past, you can think about again and just let go. Mm-hmm. Just cleanse of those things. Mm-hmm. I did some time looking through old pictures and mm-hmm. dealt with some old wounds, forgave myself for some mistakes in life that we all make. Mm-hmm. And, uh, just moved on and realized there's more memories to come and that right now is what's important right. and that cleansing yourself physically can also cleanse yourself spiritually and mentally Absolutely. and that it's an important part of our annual cycle of our growth cycle yeah. to, uh, to take in things, observe and, um, ingest all that ahara and then, uh, clean out what you don't need. Yeah, absolutely. Let it go. Yeah. And it absolutely yeah. like Ayurveda recommends yeah. regular cleansing. And like you said, it's not yeah. only physical, those physical toxins, but also emotional toxins and just yes. the lightness and the freedom that comes with releasing those. And like you said, forgiving yourself yes. or, you know, however, digesting those old emotions and letting go. Yeah. Mm, so For, yeah. Forgiving is your best your best ally. It really is. Yeah. So true. So true. And so tell us a little bit about how Ayurveda has changed you because now you're taking this path into studying Ayurveda. So how would you like to incorporate it? Of course, you incorporate it into your own personal life. Are you going to incorporate it into your work? Uh, How has it changed your life? What do you see in the future? Ayurveda has uh, changed my life in many ways, especially my work life. As a pharmacist, I've, uh, change the way I practice and the way I counsel my patients, mm-hmm. uh, adding little things here and there. I'm currently practicing uh, oncology pharmacy oh. through uh, through the phone with people. And I'll get questions about side effects for the medication, like uh, my skin is dry or I have no appetite or my mouth is dry. Uh, so things like, hey, sip warm water all day long. Don't gulp cold water, sip warm water, add tea, add herbs, add whatever, but that'll keep your mouth moist and then dry skin. I you know, I don't say practice abhyanga, right. but I say, do you have any sesame oil? Do you have any, even olive oil, just right. <clears throat> apply that right before you're going to shower and let it sit there for four or five minutes while you read a book or listen to some music and relax and then wash off the oil in the shower. That'll help tremendously better than any of the fragranced creams they have out there that people think work and just doesn't work as well as the oil. And they can use both, but the oil makes a huge difference for people. And you'd be amazed how many people take ashwagandha and triphala that, oh my gosh, a a lot of cancer people take those. And I had no idea. 
oh. that it was so well known out there, which makes my heart sing that that people already know about it. So yeah, that's I'm surprised wonderful. Too. Wonderful they, news. Yeah. Are yeah. they being prescribed that by their practitioner or is that something they just come across on their own or do you know? I do know that they mainly come across it on their own because they admit to me they're afraid to mention it to their practitioner. And so they call a pharmacist to find out if there's any drug interactions. And so they said they're just more comfortable, which I'm 100% okay with being that person for them. So yeah, yeah. that's great that they're checking. And yeah, amazing that it's known. Isn't that fantastic? Yes. I saw a commercial the other day for a line, A-L-I-G-N. Do you know what that is? It's a, a probiotic. Oh, okay. Yes. They are adding ashwagandha to it. Oh, my gosh. It's wonderful. To make happy probiotics. Yes. Wow. Hopefully not in too much. Hopefully just nice small clinical amounts right. and hopefully, you know, tested and everything. But yeah. but I was just excited to see that Ayurveda is, all this knowledge is slowly becoming part of our Western world. Beautiful. That's wonderful to hear. Great. And so incorporating yes. it into your work, I think that's amazing. That's, I love that you're yeah. just integrating it so seamlessly into your work and able to give those, you know, patients who call you advice on, on what to do and simple things, simple Dina Chari. And like you yes. said, you're, you know, editing it for the people you're talking to. You're not calling it Abhyanga. You're not calling Dina Charya, but you can still give them tips that are going to be hugely beneficial. Sometimes if they say they're fatigued, I'll say, oh, well, after you eat something, even if it's just, you know, a cup of coffee or whatever it is that you like, take 100 steps. Just take 100 steps, walk around the house, count them out, and you're going to feel so much better. And they've called back and said thank you, which is one of the best things a pharmacist can get is, you know, someone to call back and to show appreciation. So know you made a difference is really nice. Yeah. And that's it. When you're of service and when you feel like you're making a difference in someone's life, it really has yeah. a huge impact. And I think that brings great happiness as well, doesn't it? Yes. To everybody. Yeah. You feel like you're of service. Wonderful. Yes. So that's in your, in your professional life. And what about the future with your, your studies? So I'm um, definitely working my way through the counselor, the wellness uh-huh. counselor program. I hope to roll right over into the uh, wellness practitioner program so that I can learn more about the disease states and uh, incorporate all that to my pharmacy practice as well for wow. things like anemia, things yes. like that. I don't feel comfortable necessarily recommending anything just yet for, but maybe after some further education, I can help my friends and family and my patients at work. Right. to live a happier, healthier, better life. So wow. it's exciting. It is. And how amazing that you're bringing it into a whole nother realm. Yes. Yeah. And isn't that one of the best things about Ayurveda, that it's not contradictory, that exactly. it's incorporating? Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 And, you're, so and you know the interactions as well with the drugs they're taking. Yes. So, I mean, that's, they're so lucky to get on the phone with you. <laughs> so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, And so have people around you noticed changes since you started your Ayurvedic journey? Yes, mainly my husband, since that's who I'm around the most. Uh But yes, he says that my mind, my mind doesn't run around like it used to. And I don't uh, automatically find a problem and stick with that and make that my main focus that I've worked on. Um, Just being peaceful about everything and accepting of what is and trying to control the the mind, which, you know, it's very rejastic. And so it's fun to, fun to game, but, um, yes. And, uh, food wise, I've started cooking for everybody in a different way. And they all notice that they're lighter after the meal, which makes me happy to hear. I don't of course tell them that I'm purposely, Mm -hmm. uh, feeding differently, but it's, uh, good to hear. Oh, these spices are wonderful. And how did you do this? And I made my own ghee the other day for the first time. That was exciting. How'd you go? (laughs) It went very well because we just did our nutrition module at the, Uh, at the Kerala wellness counselor class. So Dr. K showed us how, and I paid close attention and it came out really good. The milk Uh, solids came out easily and it tastes wonderful. So, yeah. and I've passed around my digestive tea, my CCF to all my friends and yeah. had them try it. So great, great. that's fun. Well done. You're sharing yep. loads of people. That's wonderful. And it, you know, I'm sure the ghee tastes all yes. the better. The fact that you made it. 
right? Yeah. With a happy smile on my face oh, no, all the while. Good energy <laughs> into it. That's wonderful. You know, I love asking people about if the people around you notice changes, because I think sometimes when we're on this journey, we can just be going along, but we need to reflect back on the progress we have made and kind of give ourselves a pat on the back to go, wow, I really have made such progress and my efforts are really paying off. And I, because, you know, sometimes we're just caught up in the day to day that we don't take time to reflect. So I love to hear about how people right. around you reflect back to you, like how you've changed. Yes. Yeah, it's nice. So it's great. rewarding. It is, right? Yeah. And so is there any Ayurvedic advice or tip that you've learned on your journey that you would like to share with the listeners? Any any little tidbits that you would like to share? So yes, I have a few. So most recently, I have realized that uh, Ayurveda is patient. Yeah. It's so patient. Mm -hmm. And I just... I've been so excited to learn everything there is to learn and to absorb as much as I can that I try to take in more than I should and more than my uh, brain can take just because it's so exciting. Mm. But you don't have to. Ayurveda has been around forever and it's it's going to go at the pace you need it to go. Mm. And if you only learn one thing every day, that's OK. And if you only share one thing with your friends and family, even if it's just you know, feed someone else before you feed yourself or take those hundred steps after a meal. That's perfect. You've done exactly what you need to do and learn at the pace that works best for you and be happy that this is part of your life now. And just remember that it's not going away and we're going to all learn from it so much eventually. So Ayurveda is patient. That's something I came to me in a moment this week. Beautiful. When I was being hard on myself for not keeping up with school. <laughs> uh, no, it is. It's so true. And that's it. It's not, you're not doing this for a set period of time. This is lifestyle changes. This is a lifelong study as well. Whether you choose to go on and do a school study in Ayurveda, because, right. but even is it the, the self-study is a lifelong study yes. because you're transitioning through seasons, yeah. through you know, time as you go into different phases of your life. So even if it's your own personal practice, it's a life, lifetime study. And it is absolutely, yeah. I agree with you. It's patient, it's holistic, and you have to take your time with it. And you're peeling back the layers on anything that's built up over the years. And it's a beautiful process. It is. I just had one quote that I read the other day that I wanted to share. Please. A clinical psychologist named Lori Helgo uh, had a quote that says, your nature is not the problem. The problem is that you have become alienated from your nature, which is your source of power. Wow. And I was so impressed that a clinical psychologist, I don't know if she's uh, related to Ayurveda or not, but it just seemed to be exactly what Ayurveda tries to teach you Absolutely. is that you should embrace your nature and your constitution, and that will make your life better. Absolutely. The connection to your true nature and the connection to mother nature is huge. Exactly. Get outside. Yeah. Well, Becky, you're wonderful to come on today and share <laughs> Thank your you. story. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was so great to catch up with you. My and pleasure. I'm excited that you yes, continue your studies. You. It's, just, it's just amazing. Yes. And, you, and that you're integrating into oh, work. Speaking That's of huge. Yes. And the rest of it. it's it's what it really is integration into your whole life. Right. I did also want to thank you, Colette. I have shared your podcast with my fellow students at Kerala Ayurveda Academy oh, to let them know that after we go through an intensive or a weeknight class to listen to your podcast, because it is such a wonderful study aid to reinforce what we're learning, just to sit and listen to what you have to say. And uh, just wanted to thank you for that. That adds oh. tremendous knowledge and wisdom to my life. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your kind words. And I need to keep on my toes and make sure that information I'm putting out there is, <laughs> is of the highest standard in, in alignment with Ayurveda. That's why I'm still studying as well all the time. So yes. thank you, Becky. I appreciate all the kind time. Words. Yes, right. It's, it's lifelong. I'm in it for the long haul. Yep. <laughs> Well, Me Becky, too. my dear, it's going to be fun. It is. It is indeed. Well, thank you so much again for coming on the show today. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to continuing to watch your journey as you progress. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Take good care of yourself, my dear. And we'll chat again soon. You too.
Goodbye, Ciao. Colette. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Becky. And again, thanks to Becky for sharing her journey with us. I think it's always lovely to hear different experiences and how people incorporate Ayurveda into their life and into their work. And as Becky mentioned, she went through the Reset, Restore, Renew program, which she said was life-changing. And she found the Digestive Reset Cleanse amazing. And I just want to let you know that I have a group Digestive Reset Cleanse coming up because we're about to transition through the change of seasons. And so the group Digestive Reset Cleanse, which starts September 18th, is in a group format, meaning I will communicate with the group. However, you still get a private 90-minute online consult. So we can do a full consultation. I can see what your birth constitution is. I can determine if you have a current imbalance and tailor the recipes, the yoga, the mindfulness practices to your needs, to your lifestyle, so that you have an individualized cleanse. The dates are set, obviously, for the group, and then we go through it in a group format. I will be emailing the group as we go through the cleanse. But it is important to cleanse the body at the change of seasons, and Ayurveda recommends cleansing at the junction between spring and summer and between summer and autumn. Now, the next transition of seasons begins September 22nd, so we start the cleanse September 18th, so we'll be right there at the transition. And as you know, this transition of seasons can really affect our body, our digestive system, the root of imbalances in the body is in the digestive system. And so we want to make sure that we're transitioning through the seasons in balance and preventing any illness, any disease, any aggravation of the doshas. We want to remove any buildup of toxins from the previous season. We want to pacify the doshas and enter into the new season with ease and preventing any of those illnesses that can result at the change of seasons like coughs or colds or allergies. And of course, now we have to be concerned with COVID. So we really need to ensure that our immune system is strong. So it's a really good time to focus on your health and well-being and really take care of yourself. So if you're interested in joining this group cleanse, which is starting September 18th, just click on the link in the show notes or go to my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com. Click on the events tab and that will bring you to the group discounted cleanse. If that date doesn't suit you, I provide private cleanses throughout the year. And with a private cleanse, the benefit is you get to choose your dates and you get me one-on-one -on -one for support. So I support you throughout the cleanse and all the material is in a private page on my website, all the educational webinars, the yoga videos, the mindfulness practices, the tutorials, lots of information there. But again, I support you throughout the cleanse, whether you're doing the group or the personal cleanse. So that's information on the upcoming cleanse. Now the Reset, Restore, Renew program that Becky talked about, again, is available privately at any time. And I also do a group discounted reset, restore, renew program once a year in January, starting the new year. So that is the group discounted reset, restore, renew program. And that will be in January 2021. But if you want to start it yourself at any time and choose your own dates, that's available privately to you also. And I'll put that link in the show notes or visit my website again, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and just go to the programs page and you'll see all the private programs there. Okay. Now let me introduce you to my next wonderful lady who's going to share her Ayurvedic journey. And this is Jenica. Hi, Jenica. Hey, Colette. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much, Jenica, for taking the time. And so to start with, I'd like for you to introduce yourself to the listeners. Tell them a little bit about yourself, where you're from. Sure. Um, well, I live in a little coastal town um, in the state of North Carolina on the U.S. East Coast. Um, I'm a 43-year-old mom to a wonderful four-year-old who I share with my husband. I'm also a marine scientist. 
And that's probably the identity I've kept with me most most of life. And now becoming a, a wife and mother and kind of growing and changing has uh, is one of the things that have kind of brought me into the light of Ayurveda. Yeah. So tell us, how or when did you discover Ayurveda? Um, well, the first time I, I had heard of Ayurveda was about probably about 10 or 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've been practicing yoga for about 20 years. And I, I had noticed over time that kind of like my the most positive times I was having in life coincided with, with when I was doing yoga and when I was cooking for myself. And the two would always go hand in hand. So I kind of noticed there was a pattern there. And I went to a bookstore and wanted to find more information about yoga. Um, and I came upon a book about Ayurveda. And I picked it up, I bought it, I read it. Um, but at the time, like it seemed it didn't quite resonate with me. I was like, do I really have to stop eating meat? It, right. It's a little much. Um, but I, I enjoyed the book. I loved learning a bit more about my dosha, like everybody does. Um, and I kept it. And I found that like every every couple of years, I would pick it up again. And I would read through it. And there was something that was kind of comforting um, to me like within that. Mm -hmm. Um, So about five years ago, um, I got into a stage of life where there was a lot of changes. Uh, My husband and I um, got married. I ended up leaving the job I had been at for 10 years and then immediately became pregnant, which we weren't trying to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Then, you know, I ended up moving to the east coast of the U.S. uh, from Hawaii, which is where we had been living for many years. Uh, starting a new job, et cetera, et cetera. Just, you know, years of, of lots of change. Yeah. So that started, like I said, about five years ago. Now, fast forward a few years. And um, I'd say in very, very early 2019 is when I kind of hit, I feel like it was like my mental rock bottom. Mm. And it was just a hard time with just what I know now was just anxiety. Right. Um, and what happened, the, the moment that like flicked the switch for me was my, my husband and I were having a conversation. He was holding our son and I asked him a simple question and I didn't like his answer. And I flipped out and was yelling at him, uh, was started crying to the point that my son, who was two at the time, looks at me and says, mommy, are you OK? Oh. And then every day for the next like six months, he would ask me, mommy, are you OK? Wow. Um, yeah, so that's a big that's a big like you know no I'm I guess I'm not okay and mm-hmm. I decided to um, start working with a therapist like a, a psychologist yeah. or a psychiatrist um, and it was wonderful because one of the things she integrated into the therapy was was guided meditation mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that at the time I didn't know that's what I was doing because um, I had never really meditated before and over the course of like six to nine months these uh, beautiful changes started happening. I just started feeling more comfortable and more confident and synchronicities with friends and family going on. And I knew that there was more than this. And I knew that therapy could end, but I wanted to keep diving deeper into who I was and how to keep improving. And that's when I, I again, picked up this um, book about Ayurveda that I had found like 10 years ago Mm. and thought, like, let me look into this. And started searching around, and that's when I found your podcast. Uh. Um, so I, I don't know if I told you this story, but the reason that I called you the first time was because I was listening to your podcast, um, and I was at the gym, like on an elliptical, like just crushing it, you know. Mm-hmm. And and in the episode, you ne- like explained to the T the things I had eaten that week. The way I was exercising, the stuff going on at work and the weird things that were happening to like my body. Mm. Like I had, I had a rash. I had never gotten a rash before in my life. You know, it just things like that. And I was like, I've got to call this woman. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of (laughs) how I got into Ayurveda and why I called you the first time. Great. And it is amazing how, you know, you, you picked up that book 10 years ago and, and then when you really needed it, you immediately went back to that again. Yeah, it it was is just so I feel like fortunate that I that I held on to it. Mm-hmm. And just it's it the funny thing is like I a marine scientist like I said I'm a marine biologist. I I work with nature basically on a daily basis and I was um 
doing marine aquaculture for many years. So farming. So I'm working with nature every day, but somehow I, I separated myself from that. Mm. Um, and so, I, you know, you kind of like lost that link to, to seeing how, you know, how we fit into that or how I fit into that and, and kind of, you know, you kind of get off track and right. Ayurveda because kind of, again, kind of brings you back to, to remind us that we are kind of part of nature and to, to listen to what we need and listen to what our body is telling us. Absolutely. And like you said, as someone who works with nature, very closely on a daily basis that we can all get off track and life can take us off track. And before we know it, we're in this cycle of, you know, of life where we're not having that connection either to ourselves or to nature and so on. I, I wish that I could give this information to people when they're younger. Yeah. I I hope I can Mm -hmm. bestow some, you know, bestow Mm -hmm. some of this to my son uh, for younger women, especially, I feel like um, I, I imagine a lot of your clients are women. And I think mm-hmm. uh, we tend to, well, we first will reach to like taking care of ourselves and, and kind of building ourselves up when we feel like we need to. Um, and I just I just wish some of this knowledge should get imparted to kids earlier because it would save uh, so much maybe heartache or frustration yeah. growing up. Yeah, it's definitely important that we start educating children about this. Totally agree. So tell us, Jenica, how did your journey within Ayurveda unfold? So you found the podcast and then how did you progress on your healing journey? Well, um, I think you and I did, we did a consultation Mm -hmm. and, um, shortly thereafter I signed up for your daily habits course. Mm -hmm, Yeah. And I found that really helpful because like, no, now, no matter what's going on, I get up, I scrape my tongue and I drink some water with lemon and it happens every day. And it seems like the littlest thing, Mm -hmm. but maybe even if it's just in my head, you know, that it's still real if it is, but even if it's just in my head, like I got up, I did that, that's something good I did for myself to Mm -hmm. clear out the ama from the night before, um, and to start the day on the right foot. And, um, so I've integrated a lot of what you teach in the course, including regular daily, basically breath work, meditation, um, yoga exercise. And and some of that stuff I I kind of already did. I I know I'm the type of person that needs to get out and exercise just a little bit every day, just to be outside and move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, the, the specific things I started to eat and pay attention to, um, I, I learned from you again, the breath work and meditation. And now I do most of that daily. Um, yeah, I'm still, you know, we all still work and improve and change every day. So mm-hmm. it's always, it's a journey that's still ongoing, but, Absolutely. um, definitely have been able to integrate a lot of the information to the day to day. Great. And then a lot of the education around in the daily habits course around becoming your own healer and the principle of opposites and the uh, connecting with your intuition. How did you feel about that? Uh, it, I can't even begin to tell you again, it just came at such a, a perfect time in my life um, when I needed not only to stay strong and healthy for my family, um, but also when I, you know, faced with options and questions and challenges, you know, it kind of gives me a little more confidence in myself. Um, today is, today was a perfect example. And I think we spoke a little bit about this earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, the way the past few days have been for me and the way last night and this morning kind of was for me. Um, if it was a year ago, I would have called and canceled this meeting. I wouldn't have had it in me to, to chat with you this morning, but Mm -hmm. because of Ayurveda, I I saw what was happening over the past few days, Um, everything from being hit by a hurricane to my husband having to go out of town, Um, you know, then, you know, just to keep things easy. My son and I were just eating lots of pizza, but I've got some work deadlines and it's all come down on top of me. And neither my son nor I slept a wink last night. Mm. You know, it was it was rough getting up and getting him to daycare today. But because of what I learned with Ayurveda, it, you know, I can kind of say, you know, Jen, you're okay. Like you've got this, um, go make yourself something great to have for breakfast. And you know, you're going to feel good. And you're going to be able to put a smile on my face. Great. So I, 
made myself a tasty fruit smoothie with all kinds of good stuff in it. And, and I'm able to make it and show up to a meeting where a year or two ago, I might not have. Right, exactly. And that's what it's all about is having that foundation. We all go off track, but it's important not to go off track for weeks or months, because then that could lead to serious aggravations in the body and mind. But you go off track for a few days and then you're like, okay, I need to get back on my daily routine. I need to get back on my healthy eating and so on. And that's the key to this. It's putting yourself back on that routine so that you can really bring yourself back into balance and make sure that you don't have any of these big aggravations taking place. Exactly. Mm. Um, you know, one of the things you had suggested for me early on was to stop drinking coffee. Um, mm -hmm. because I, you know, I love my morning coffee, but I, I'm an early riser. I'm pitted dominant, so can get a little fiery mm -hmm. sometimes and a little, a bit of a perfectionist. Um, and you suggested I stop drinking coffee and I was like, Ooh, Colette, I don't know if I can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can do decaf. So you, again, you, your suggestion was do decaf, use oat milk. And I've been doing that ever since you suggested it. And that is something that has like saved my relationship with my husband because in the mornings I don't pound a cup of coffee and then they get all like fiery and right. frustrated. Right. Um, right. It, it's, and you know, two weeks ago when I ran out of decaf and I started drinking caffeinated coffee with milk about three days later, I start getting real picky with my husband in the morning. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, and that's like, it. That's oh, what wait, Ted. <laughs> yeah. And that's what yeah. I love. It's you seeing the changes in yourself. And that's my whole objective is to empower people to take charge of their own health and to see the changes within themselves. And that's the biggest educator and the biggest motivator is when you're like, oh, when I drink caffeine, I get fiery, I get a little bit irritated. And then that starts, you know, disagreements or at home or whatever. But yeah, it's, they're powerful recognitions and a powerful awarenesses that you have that will really help you to keep up those good habits for you. Yes, absolutely. Well, good for you. Well done. And that's, that's the thing is once you learn this information, once you learn about Ayurveda, you learn about your constitution, you have more awareness then. And like I always say, I think awareness is the catalyst to change. Once you have the education, once you understand your, your aggravations, your tendencies, then you're more aware and you'll start implementing changes to pacify those doshas. And that's huge because now you're yeah. preventing and huge aggravations. Exactly. And the, the mindfulness type of meditation um, that I started doing um, through, through your teaching uh, was, you know, is a, is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. Just being, being able to step back and take a couple breaths in that moment and be like, okay, you know, what's, what's going on and, and kind of re reset yourself and be able to evaluate, um, the situation maybe without so much overheated emotion. Um, mm -hmm. I've also, one of the things I think I originally came to, to talk to you about was, um, my energy levels. So I would have these huge, you know, I'd be, have a lot of energy and then I'd just crash and a lot of energy and I'd just crash. And I was having a, a kind of a hard time making it through the workday. And again, having this suggestion for how to eat, what to eat, when to eat it, mm -hmm. um, really helped like level that out. You know, I don't have these, you know, highs and lows throughout the day. It's just kind of a nice steady flow of, of energy and, and kind of knowing how to structure my workday. Um, even is, is great information that we learned from Ayurveda. Right. And that's why it is the manual for life. You know, it really does give you guidelines on everything. And then, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So once you learn it, then you have it and you have that knowledge and it will stay with you. And like you said, these are simple things. It's just understanding how your body and mind works. There's no one size fits all. It's really understanding your unique constitution, how your energy runs, how your mind goes, what, like how best to structure your day for your lifestyle, for your job, for your family and so on. And that's what's key. It's really getting the tailored information. Absolutely. Well, and um, I, I so appreciate working with you because you don't pass judgment oh, um, on, on, I certainly can't speak for other clients, but certainly on me when um, I come up with a problem and I can't really 
um, maybe integrate the the first thing you suggest you work with me for uh, on it. Um, it's it's just been such a pleasure to to work with you and to learn so much about this. And I keep wanting to learn more and go deeper into it. I mean, like Ayurveda, and I you've said this in the podcast. You you learn about one layer. And then you can just go deeper mm-hmm. and, and you can keep doing that self inquiry and, and feel what's happening within you. And I just feel like the more I kind of learn about that, and the deeper I go, the more I learn about myself, the more I connect with everybody else and kind of the universe. And it's just been, it's, it's fascinating. There's so much to, to learn and to integrate. It's, I just really, really enjoy having Ayurveda in my life. Beautiful. And that's it. It is fascinating. And what you mentioned a moment ago, particularly with the mindfulness practices, is about being able to catch yourself in the moment that you see, oh, my pitta is getting aggravated. And this was me before as well. You know, that that fiery pitta comes up. And in the past, I know for me, I would have just exploded. (laughs) But now it's like I can catch myself. And I think that that's what meditation and mindfulness practices do for us. It's that it gives us that moment of clarity and that moment to just take a step back and to look at the situation and see where it's going, right? Before you step into the fire. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I wake up in the morning and where I, I used to wake up and I would get stressed out. Like I wake up in the morning and I'm grateful for my son. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy that I have my husband mm-hmm. and I, ha- you know, literally almost every day for a year, I would like yell, um, in the mornings about something. Okay. I get so upset about something and that's, that's stopped. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's so just beautiful. makes, yeah, it just makes life easier. It doesn't, there's enough challenges out there. We don't need to make it harder on ourselves. Absolutely. You know, so yeah, <laughs> now, absolutely. now knowing how to support myself. Well, yeah, uh, absolutely. And then, you know, having that put pit a drive, sometimes we can drive ourselves too hard and, you know, really pushing ourselves. But I love that the, the real inspiration for the fact that it was time to make changes was, you know, from your son and that him inquiring every day, are you okay? I mean, that's beautiful. And that, that really showed you that uh, it's time to make some changes. Right. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to step back and look at yourself, but you know, when I had that moment, like, I don't, I didn't want to be that kind of mm. mom. Right. And, you know, there are a few things over the years that kind of indicated to me what was happening and, and that it was anxiety and, and what that could be, but I didn't know what to do about it. Mm. Um, and <laughs> now, now I have a great way, you know, that a lot of the anxiety is, is gone generally speaking, but when, when things get a little wonky, now I know what to do about it. Exactly. And you know, I think the understanding, I remember we were talking that it's not only, it, it's anxiety from lifestyle, from food, from work, like it's, it's all encompassing everything in your life, right? So you really have to look at so many angles as to where it's coming from. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the last, so I, I was, um, I think I mentioned before I started working with you, I'd been seeing a therapist for about uh, nine months. And on our last meeting, uh, you know, we were talking and I said, well, have you heard of Ayurveda? And she said, well, yeah, of course I have. And I think uh, you and I had had our first consultation. I said, I was like, you know, so I started working with this woman and she suggested X, Y, and Z. And I said, you know, I never, I never even thought about, you know, how much what I ate would affect my mind. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, yeah, <laughs> it, it absolutely does. And yeah. she was like so happy that I was following on this path because it's just a, a great way to continue um, yeah. learning how to live life in a really fun way. But I think the majority of people don't understand. It's not something we get taught. How would we know that our food affects our mind? We weren't, you were never thought that. Right. We, we know that it can affect our body. We can mm-hmm. see physical changes and, and we're aware of, of disease that can mm-hmm. happen. But, but right, there isn't the connection right. with, with, our mind and our feelings and emotions. Yeah, absolutely. So is it fair to say that Ayurveda has had a big impact on your life? Oh, yes, absolutely. And it's going to be part of my life um, from now on. I want to continue studying it, continue working with it, um, and continue learning more to just kind of, yeah, continue growing as a person and growing with it. It's just, it's just a gift. 
I love it. Music to my ears. And I know you shared with me before that you're also spreading the word with your family. Is that right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, my sisters were here visiting me a few months ago and she found a book about Ayurveda on my dresser and uh, came out into the living room and said, wow, I was just reading through this book and it really describes stuff that's like happening with me and my digestion. And maybe I should start using some ghee. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, maybe you should. Excellent. And then also with friends. Yeah. Friends from work. We, we tend to have a lot of deadlines in my job and it can get a bit stressful. And I have lots of friends that um, drink every night and it's kind of how they cope, but I can see how their stress and anxiety levels build. So just with some girlfriends over the weekend, I was kind of singing the praises of Ayurveda as well. Love it. You're spreading the word. That's what it's all about. And, and as well, I think, uh, you know, when they see changes in you, have they noticed, have your friends or family noticed changes in you? Yes, uh, particularly my friends uh, from work, mm -hmm. um, how I was a year ago versus how I am now. Yeah, there's a big difference. Right. And that speaks volumes to people. They're like, they want to know, hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why is she always smiling? Why is she so relaxed? <laughs> love it. Love it. You're really a good role model for for Ayurveda. So as we finish up here, Jenica, is there any Ayurvedic advice or tip that you've learned on your journey that you would like to share with the listener today? Anything at all? You know, I think that you don't, the biggest tip is that you don't need to rush in and make a, a hundred changes all at once. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit gradually and see what works for you. And again, um, nobody's perfect all the time. Sometimes you got to run through McDonald's because it might save your sanity an hour down the road for dinner time. And that's okay if it happens every now and again, you know, um, just, just try to like live your best life and, and learn what that is and take it slow. Exactly. Beautiful. I love it. And just take it step by step. I think a lot of people want to rush in and make too many changes at once. And then that can be overwhelming. And it's wise words to take it slow uh, take it at your own pace. And these little changes can have big impacts. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, Jenica, thank you so much for sharing this information today. I think it's going to help so many people out there. And I appreciate you sharing your story with us. Well, thank you, Colette. I've been so happy to be here. Thank you for all that you do. My pleasure. And we will chat again soon, Jenica. Take good care of yourself in the meantime. And you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye for now. Thanks again to Jenica for sharing her Ayurvedic journey with us. Always great to get insights into how other people are introduced to Ayurveda, how they integrate it into their lives. And hopefully that inspired you. And I also wanted to talk about what Jenica did on her journey. She started her journey with an Ayurvedic consultation. She did a 90 minute online consult with me. And in that consult, I help determine the birth constitution of each individual. Then we look at if you have a current imbalance, which is the most important information. And I then give a tailored strategy for each person talking about the way you eat, what you eat, what time you're eating, lifestyle, exercise, self-care practices, mindfulness practices, morning routines, and evening rituals that are all tailored to your lifestyle. So I really look at what your lifestyle is, what your day is like, what your evening's like, and tailor that to, to each individual and making sure that I'm not overwhelming or causing stress. So the 90 minute in-depth consultation is a really great way to start your journey. And for some people, that's enough. Now, Jenica did go on to do the daily habits course and that daily habits for a holistic health course is a 28 day self-paced online course. You get access to a private web page, which has short daily webinars, like 10 minutes, just bite-sized pieces of information. And we talk not only about implementing the Dinacharya, the daily self-care practices and putting triggers in place to make sure that you're implementing them into your day and that they stay part of your day for life. But also we talk a, a lot about the circadian rhythms, lots of education on the mental gunas, Rajasat 
yourself and Thomas on how to keep the mind in balance. There's yoga videos, there is pranayama tutorials and meditation tutorial as well. And we also talk about the gunas, the 10 pairs of opposites and how to become your own healer. And also we look into the intuition and really understanding your true nature and letting your intuition guide you and just becoming more empowered in making those decisions for your own health. And that's my objective in this course is to really give you the information so that you feel more confident and empowered to take charge of your own health. So that daily habits course is available at any time because it is self-paced. It is online. And if you go to my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com, go to the programs tab and you can sign up there and then I give you access to that program. I will also put a link to that in the show notes. Now, if you want to chat with me before signing up with any program, I understand people sometimes have questions if what program is best for them and so on. Take advantage of the free 15 minute online chat, my services inquiry call, and we can chat about your questions or your concerns or your needs. And then we can determine from there what is best for you. So uh, you'll find all those links in the show notes and thank you again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the insights into these Ayurvedic journeys of Becky and Jenica. Please share this podcast episode if you think it would be of interest to friends or family. And if you would like to rate and review the podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast, I would truly appreciate that. Also, if you would like to support the podcast, you can do so via my Patreon account and I will put that link in the show notes. You can also find it on the podcast page on the website. So thanks again. Take good care of yourself. Be well and slong before. Bye for now.